Hi, I'm Jeremy Solomon from Solomon Exam Prep. If you're studying for a securities licensing exam, such as the Series 6, Series 62, Series 65, Series 7, or Series 82, you need to understand qualified dividends. First, let's remind ourselves that dividends are the portion of company profits that some companies pay their shareholders. There is no requirement to pay dividends, and many of the fastest growing companies don't pay their shareholders dividends because the board of directors and management think it's better for the company if profits are plowed back into the business rather than into the hands of shareholders. Dividends may be paid on a regular basis, typically quarterly, but they can also be paid on an irregular basis, whenever the company feels like it. Whatever the cause, dividends are one of the best things about owning stocks. If things go right, you, the shareholder, get a regular dividend check while you watch your share price appreciate over time. But it gets even better, courtesy of the federal government. Dividends are taxed at ordinary income tax rates, the same as earned income, or they can be taxed at a special, lower, qualified rate that happens to be the same as the shareholder's tax rate on long-term capital gains. Currently, that ranges from 0 to 20 percent, depending on your tax bracket. But don't worry about the actual rates. The exam probably won't expect you to memorize them. Just know that as long as long-term capital gains rates remain lower than ordinary income tax rates, shareholders receiving qualified dividends get an extra treat at tax time. To understand why, remember that dividends are not a tax-deductible expense to the company paying the dividend. Instead, dividends come out of after-tax profits. And since dividend payments from C corporations, most publicly traded companies, have already been taxed at the corporate level, the thinking goes, it's not fair to tax dividend income again on the shareholder's individual tax return. So, to reduce the shareholder's tax burden, the government permits special qualified treatment of dividend distributions. To be considered qualified, however, a dividend must come from a stock issued by a U.S. company or a qualified foreign company that an investor has held, unhedged, more than 60 days, including the stock's ex-dividend date. For preferred shares, the holding period requirement is more than 90 days, including the ex-dividend date. Examples of dividends that are generally not qualified include real estate investment trusts, REITs, and distributions from tax-advantaged pass-through entities, such as MLPs, royalty trusts, S-corporations, and partnerships. Capital gains distributions are not qualified, nor are distributions from banks, credit unions, or savings and loans. Generally, if the paying entity reports the distribution to the shareholder via a 1099 div form, then the dividend may be qualified, while a distribution reported to the shareholder on a Schedule K-1 is generally not eligible for qualified status. Well, what about mutual funds and ETFs? Well, similarly, the portion of mutual fund and ETF dividends that come from qualified dividends are taxed on the shareholder's return at the favorable qualified dividend rate, provided the fund and the shareholder meet the holding period requirement. Whether qualified or not, the importance of dividends to equity investing cannot be understated. The reason is as simple as it is obvious. A dividend means the company is not squandering all its profits, but instead is returning some of that money to its owners, the shareholders. 